Hey guys, welcome to Your Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and where you can get all your dedicated HP Reverb D2 content right here, right now. If you're new to the channel, welcome to you. Very nice to meet you. And a huge welcome back to our regular viewers and subscribers. Thank you for your continued support. Today's video, as I mentioned at the beginning, is very exciting because we're going to look at how we can boost those frame rates and also those high fidelity textures using a special script. I'm going to show you how to install it. Don't worry, it's extremely easy. Just in case you weren't aware, we have uploaded other videos all about benchmarking, for example, 60 hertz versus 90 hertz, showing you how you can get really cool, smooth gameplay and high graphics at 60 hertz as well, would you believe? All right, let's jump into VR. Entertainment. Um, so basically, I want to thank, first of all, uh, Sim Racing Corner for the file that he was able to, you know, make available for people. So do go and check out uh, his channel as well. So all you have to do is go to the link, which is in the description below, to go and actually download this file. Now, do make sure you have an antivirus installed on your computer, uh, you know, just to be on the safer side. So after you've downloaded the folder and you've unzipped it or unrolled it, whichever program you might be using, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but basically you'll see inside of the folder, which is called ACC VR settings, you're going to see three different files. First file will be called engine.ini, which is what you're going to need to power the new engine with the omitted script inside. And then you're going to see the VR60 underscore g2.json, which are basically the settings chosen by this person to use with this specific script. And I'll explain to you how to change it and tweak it without you know affecting things too much. And then you have a readme.txt, which is very important. So we're going to go through this in just a little moment. So before you go through the readme.txt, if you don't have any text, you know, kind of software, just download Notepad, generally speaking. It should be on your computer, but if you don't, go and download it, it's free. Time Warp. All right, so we're gonna go through the readme.txt file because it's got a lot of good stuff in there, which is pretty important. And let me just minimize this. So we're gonna skip uh, this part here. We're gonna go straight to the HMD HP Reverb D2. Now for this, it says here Steam VR super sampling 50% because 100% is times to the native resolution. And to use Windows Mixed Reality option on best quality now, um, I've done some testing on this part. So um, for sure, I'm going to, you know, I don't normally put best quality. I'll put best performance simply because the Windows Mixed Reality mirrored um, window will disappear from your actual desktop, which basically means you'll have more frames per second uh, inside of the VR application itself. So you can test, but I'm just giving you my personal feedback. It also says in NVIDIA control panel, set virtual reality pre-rendered frames to use the 3D application settings. Now, personally speaking, I put it to four because I, you know, to me, when I put the maximum, it means that the machine has more time to actually think in terms of what frames it's supposed to render before the graphics are, you know, uh, extrapolated and put there on the screen for you to actually see. So this again, you know, is my personal preference uh, and my personal feedback, but of course, go and try it out if you feel that for you, it works better. And then also here in game resolution, uh, we will talk about this, you know, later, but it says 1920 by uh, 1080p and also VSync, of course, make sure that it is switched off. Now, moving forward, he's given us a couple of options. One will be using 90 hertz for Windows Mixed Reality, and then the other one will be at 60 hertz. Now, do go and check out the previous video, which I had uploaded to the channel, as I did a benchmark between 90 hertz and 60 hertz, and I think you'll find it very useful because we can get some pretty decent gameplay and resolution at 60 hertz. So, um, for option one, we focus on reprojection and then custom config, you use the, basically the JSON file um, you know, that he has provided. And then for option two, we're going to skip this because we already did this uh, previously. And honestly, we had already some very good results. So the actual script itself doesn't really help that much. It helps somewhat, but you know, not super, super greatly more uh, compared to the benchmark that we had actually uh, done before. And I'm also going to share with you for option one, my personal settings later. We're going to go through one by one after the benchmarking. And you'll see, I think you'll be pretty surprised by the results there. Okay, so he also provides you the details as to where to actually place the files inside of the various different folders. So I'm going to show this to you. It's, you know, it takes two seconds. But before we do that, let's just go inside of the important notes below. 
For sharper image drop resolution 70%, increased pixel density and enable temporal upsampling. Now normally speaking, temporal upsampling is always on as you know from the previous videos that we uploaded. And I'm going to show you exactly the benchmarking and also the resolution settings one by one inside of Aceto Corsa Competizione a bit later on as well. He says that if using 100% disabled temporal app sampling as it adds some blur in this scenario. Now personally with the RTX 2070, I'm not able to bump it up at that kind of resolution simply because the GPU heats up too much and it will cause some issues. So if you're using, you know, perhaps an RTX 2080 and above or a super cool, you know, graphics card, even if you're using an AMD of some kind, please do leave a comment below and let us know whether you find that, you know, this actually occurs. But the config is using pixel density in game settings instead of SteamVR SS as it seems to produce, produce sorry, cleaner results. SteamVR SS is kept at 100%. Now, I did find, however, that when we're using, for example, SteamVR at 50%, there are some issues there. So, you know, I'm going to show you the benchmarks very, very shortly. Um, and then below it says pixel density equals, you know, SteamVR super sampling. So 200% pixel density equals 400% of super sampling. So just take note of the numbers there so that, you know, uh, you'll know how to adjust things accordingly later. And again, I'm going to show this to you through some different benchmarks. You can further tune frame rate by adjusting resolution and pixel density. Pixel density impacts sharpness more than resolution. Now, basically what he's telling you is that with this script, don't worry, you can make adjustments as you need to. And of course, um, the higher pixel density also, the higher your GPU's um, heat is going to be as well. So do take note of that too. Um, disable mirrors in CPU bound scenarios. So if this happens to you, follow as is. And then you can also see the FPS visible by changing one of the JSON script uh, details here. So I personally don't do this because I use the um, FPS tool from SteamVR in order to you know judge as to what's going on there. Classic rock. So basically for the VR.json file, all you do is you put it in users, then users. So for me, this will be administrator then documents, Assetto Corsa Competizione, customs, and then video settings. So basically it will go inside of here. And this will be the file here, the VR underscore G2.json. And basically this folder is where it records all your personal settings that you may have saved inside of Assetto Corsa Competizione. And then I'm going to show you how to load these files inside of the actual ACC later after we do the benchmarking. And then for the other file, which is the engine.ini file, all you have to do is go to users, then user again. So for me, it's administrator, then go to app data, local, AC2, saved, config, and then windows, no editor. And then you'll just basically drop the file inside of here, which will be this folder here. Then inside of here is all you have, you know, all the various different .ini files, basically. And then it will be this one here. Now, what you can do is you can actually, before you drag and drop it, is, you know, just save the original one just in case you have any issues somewhere else. You know, maybe call it engine.original or something. And then just save it somewhere. And then, you know, then drag and drop the new file inside of here so that it will take effect the next time that you will load ACC uh, in SteamVR. This Sunday. Okay, so for the script to take effect, all we have to do, I'm going to use the PC version here just to show you for demonstration purposes, is go to options and go to system video. And we have to load the script, um, you know, that we have put inside the file earlier, the folder earlier. So all you have to do is go to manage custom video presets and then go and look for VR60 underscore G2. Normally, if you place it in the correct location, as I showed you, it will load up here. And after you've created your own, you know, let's say that you've tweaked it a little bit and, you know, you want to save it and refer to it, all you have to do is click on here, create a name, and then save the actual, you know, file name under whatever name you, you decide to name it. So once you've clicked on the file name, click on load. And what happens normally is you will see the file name here, just underneath. And normally all your settings will be changed according to the actual file itself. If it hasn't, all you have to do is just click on it again and then just click, you know, load a second time and then normally it will be there. Now, I will be taking you through my own personal settings for the best optimum, you know, potential graphics and frame rates later on after the after the actual benchmarking. Weekend Warriors. All right, so we're back inside of Aceto Corsa Competizione. Now, for the first benchmarking, a couple of things to note. 
First of all, we disabled all reprojection from the Windows Mixed Reality software, and also we brought down the super sampling inside of SteamVR to 50%. Now, if you don't really know how to do this and you want to follow those steps, please go and check out the previous video, which was all about reprojection. Now, when you start to use this script with the same settings from your previous settings on your own computer, you're going to see the differences are pretty much night and day. However, if you used very high settings, you may still be disappointed. So I do recommend you follow some of the graphic settings I did suggest in the previous videos where we didn't talk about reprojection and later when you turn on reprojection to follow some of the settings as well. Here we're running basically at the render scale at about 70% and for the pixel density is boosted up all the way to 170%. That is pretty high. And as you can basically tell, the actual GPU temperature and usage is still in the 70s. We've got a mixture of green and orange there. So it's all pretty good. And I can tell you that the actual graphics, even though we are super sampling 50%, are not too bad. It's pretty well, pretty good. And, you know, in terms of the smoothness and the frame rates, even though it says, you know, average frame rate 70% and reprojection is turned off, we still have the caching happening from the actual GPU, which is why you can still see some reprojection ratio there inside of the FPS tool that we purchased on Steam. And by the way, I'm going to do a separate video. So do be part of the notification squad. So YouTube tells you when I upload this video inside of your video feed about the FPS tool as to how to use it and you know what kind of expectations to have before you actually splash your cache. Now to get most of the GPU temp, I have to admit that I have to switch off more or less the shadows to low because if I put them on mid, then I am going to have some difficulties with pixel density at that kind of frame rate. So shadows does play a big part in terms of the GPU temp, especially if your pixel density is going to be pretty high. So if you put your pixel density around, let's say 140%, then I can definitely boost up the shadows to mid or high in, you know, super sampling Steam VR 50% without any issues there. Turn it up. All right, so now I'm going to show you the actual settings that I use to get the best, most optimum gameplay that I possibly can with ACC. There's nothing more really that I can do other than experiment with maybe OpenXR, and that's about it. So. Do subscribe to the channel, make sure you enable the notification bell and be part of the notification squad so you don't miss a video which I'll upload about using OpenXR with ACC and all those other settings as well, okay? So let's start off from the top. So basically I start off, the only thing I change here is a frame rate limit to 90. Any other settings you want to see, please go and check out the previous videos that I had done. And then the only other changes that I made is for resolution scale, now, as I mentioned before, it's great because I can go all the way as high as 90% with the script. Without the script, honestly, and just reprojection, I'm not able to. I have to go down to 70. So with this script, I can actually go to 80. And then I can also put view distance. I will put this to high. Shadows, I can put them to mid or high without any issues whatsoever. Although, to be honest with you, my preferred setting is mid with this script and without the script is on low. For shadow distance, I always put this on low because I don't really see that much of a difference anyway, to be honest with you. And then for uh, anti-aliasing, I will put this on high. Anti-aliasing type on temporal as per usual. Now for the effects post-processing, I can put it on mid, but I generally prefer to put it on low because I don't generally see that much of a big difference using it anyway. For textures here, I will put this on low also. For mirror distance, put it to 70, no changes. Mirror quality, no changes. Mirror frame rate limit, again, I'll put this on 90. And then for mirror resolution, I'll put this on low or I'll turn it off because generally speaking, sometimes I don't need to generally know who's behind me anyway. So off, I can make use of those frame rates. Uh, and then for um, opponent visibility, now the script limits it to 12, just to let you know. But generally speaking, I don't put it more than 12 anyway. So for me, it doesn't really make that much of a difference anyway. And then basically for mirror quality, if you want to switch it off, you, sorry, if you want to switch off the mirror, you have to do it from here, not from this one, just FYI. And then for the actual virtual reality settings, now for VR density, my best setting that I use using this script is actually between 140 and 150. However, I have found that with using this script, I can bump it up 
all the way to 170 using the render scale at 90. The only reason why I bump it down is simply because my GPU doesn't have the cooling system inside of it to keep it as cool as possible. So I did find that, you know, using higher settings, unfortunately, it's going to increase the temperature all the way to 83, 84, 85. So that's way too high for me, but the actual system can handle it. And then downstairs, you know, in the advanced settings, this won't generally, you know, as I mentioned in previous videos, affect anything in terms of frame rates, except for the car LOD. This I will put to, uh, sorry, the H LOD um, and the car LOD do affect a little bit, but the car LOD normally I put it to 60. Um, and then for the foliage, I'll put this on low, everything here. The bloom, I will take this off because it will affect the frame settings actually. And the volumetric, I will put this on low as well. So, you know, and then the rest as is here. If you want to know more details about this, do go and check out the previous video that I had done. And sorry, for image customization, this is where it doesn't really affect uh, the frame rates, except for the camera dirt effect. I will leave this to one because it does affect frame rates. And then for everything as is, if you want to know more details, again, please do go and check out the previous videos as I go more into detail about this specific section. Rock and roll! All right, so we're back inside of Assetto Corsa Competizione, and we have bumped up the Steam VR Super Sampling settings back to 100%. Do go and check out the previous videos where I show you how to do all those kind of different things. And reprojection is on. And also, as I mentioned, the previous video talks about all about reprojection. So you can go and check that video out as well. So as you can see, the gameplay here is very smooth. We're racing against all the other cars and the GPU temp and usage is in the 70s as well. And it's, you know, taking an effect between the orange and also the green colors there. And of course, it says frame, you know, frame per second 45 because we have the reprojection that's happening. So, you know, we have all these extra frame rates that have been extrapolated by Windows Mixed Reality, which are not taken into account by the FPS tool, which you can purchase on Steam VR. So we're going to do a couple of different benchmarks. Now here, the render scale is actually set to 70. And also we bumped up the pixel density all the way to 170. Now the gameplay is very smooth. As I mentioned, I had no issues whatsoever. All the cars can fly by. There's no problems there. I mean, generally speaking, really all good. And as you can see, we're kind of in the green and also kind of in the orange. So generally speaking, it's quite safe. Now it would be great, of course, if I had a better cooling system because I could actually bump this up all the way to 90 for the render scale and 190 for the pixel density. So let me just show you what it looks like when we bump up the render scale all the way to 90. So here the render scale is bumped up all the way to 90% and then we just put lowered a little bit the pixel density to 155 because my GPU, you know, I need to be careful a little bit even though I'm doing these videos. So as you can tell, the GPU temperature has increased because the render frame has increased. And also, however, we're, you know, we are in the 80s and we do have a little bit of red, but we're mostly in the orange section. Now, the frames per second, as I mentioned in previous videos, because we have the reprojection that's happening here from Windows Mixed Reality, that's say 45. But the gameplay is still extremely smooth. The graphics are really, I mean, to me, they're pretty sharp. And this is really the optimum gameplay that I possibly can get at this moment in time. Do hit the notification bell and be part of the notification squad so YouTube tells you in your feed when I upload future videos where we'll actually be using OpenXR to boost things even further, hopefully, because it does work with some apps. So let's see if it works with ACC as well. Subscribe now. So in the future videos, we will be talking about OpenXR. We're also going to be doing some benchmarks overclocking the GPU with various different overclocking settings for the RTX 2070. Anyway, then we're also going to be starting to talk about Automobilista, Automobilista number two. We're going to do all this again with various different graphic settings, try and optimize the gameplay as much as possible. And of course, we're going to talk about the different accessories using the VR cover facial interface for the HP Reverb G2. So I've been testing it out for the last two, three weeks now. I think it's about time we start uploading those videos. All right, until next time, leave a comment below, leave me your feedback, do your testing. Let me know if this video helped you and if all the graphic settings here, you know, made any difference for you. Until next time, see you in the next video. Skudoosh!